This program is intended to be general in nature and should not be used as a substitute for advice from a qualified health provider. On Health Matters, television for life, did you resolve to eat better in 2017? We're in the KSPS kitchen with renowned chef Travis Dickinson of Clover Restaurant as he shares healthy dishes he makes at home. Plus, a food expert of another kind, Kelly Groth, a registered dietitian from Providence Sacred Heart Medical Center, will join us. It's an hour of food and fun that will inspire the chef in all of us. Right now on Health Matters. Health Matters is made possible by our viewers, the friends of KSBS and by Providence Healthcare. I'm Dr. Andrew Boulay, and when my wife had a cardiac arrest, I chose Providence because I knew that everything we needed for her complex care was available from the emergency room to radiology to the nursing staff to the specialists we needed for her care. I'm Arnie Peterson, and I'm an orthopedic surgeon, and I work at Sacred Heart for Providence Medical Group. When I needed my hip replaced, I chose Providence because of the professionalism and the care that I knew I'd receive. I never thought twice about going anywhere else. Good evening, I'm Teresa Lukens, and welcome to another edition of Health Matters. The theme for tonight's show is Resolute Recipes. It's that time of year when a lot of us resolve to lose weight and eat healthier. And here to help us do that is Chef Travis Dickinson. He's the executive chef at Clover Restaurant in Spokane. Also with us this evening is Kelly Groth. She is the registered dietitian at Providence Sacred Heart Medical Center. And welcome to you both. I'm very excited about this. I love getting in the kitchen, talking food. And we've got some great recipes. And, and Kelly's going to break down the nutrition value for us as well tonight. Go over the menu for us, Chef. Awesome. So we're doing some fun things that are good to uh, kind of do in a batch through the week that stay nice and healthy and just uh, make it easy on you to meal plan and get things going. So we're going to start off with a nice little cauliflower soup. No cream, just making a broth out of the trimmings from the cauliflower and your other vegetables. Uh, so nice and light, but it's got some body to you know hold you through the winter. Uh, then we're going to do a nice salad of some local wheat berries, has some sautéed wild mushrooms, uh, a bit of wilted kale, some parmesan, and uh, vinaigrette of your choice. We're going to do a little chili garlic vinaigrette today. And then we'll finish off with a turkey kefta, so kind of a Lebanese spiced ground turkey kebab, uh, turmeric rice, and a little nice tahini sauce. Yeah, so you're going to introduce us to some really new fun flavors for a lot of us. Because some of those items you mentioned, I haven't tried yet, so I'm excited to try it. Excellent. Are these uh, recipes that you do at the, the restaurant? Uh, we do the soup at the restaurant from time to time. I've got a great sous chef that's like kind of our awesome soup guy, so he takes care of that program most of the time. But we do run this uh, here and there. The wheatberry salad we do on occasion, and then the uh, kefta is actually something I do at home for myself and the wife, just meal planning through the week mm -hmm. pretty often. It's nice. And Kelly, we're going to we're going to talk about the recipes as we go through. But overall, how did Chef do when he was uh, bringing us healthier meal meals tonight? He did pretty good. Um, he's using lean meats and he's got some good vegetables in there that give us some good vitamins and minerals and fiber. So overall, I think he's done a pretty good job. Excellent. Excellent. Also tonight, we welcome your phone calls and emails. If you've got questions for dietitian Kelly Groth or for Chef Travis, please give us a call and, and let us know. We'll be happy to get you on the air. All right, where do we get started? All right, we're going to get the cauliflower soup going. So okay. one thing I started off the air that I uh, didn't really get a chance to show, but for the sake of time we're doing it, we've got a nice little cauliflower broth going here. So we took all the trimmings from the cauliflower, uh, the top of our leek, which is also already cut up to go into the soup, the trimmings from our onions, um, some so different herbs, different spices. The recipe is all online for you there. But it's a way to use your trimming to get a lot more flavor out of it. So you get more of that cauliflower punch because these leaves, the stems, all of that are going right into here. So it's sort of the same application as doing a, a chicken stock where you would use the, the chicken bones or something to make a stock. Here exactly. you're just using the vegetable parts. Yeah, and on a, you know, at the restaurant when we're not trying to be particularly healthy, we'll take all the trimmings from our Parmesan, so the rinds and things, we'll throw them in and we make a nice Parmesan vegetable That's stock great. and we use in risottos and things like that. And so. you get a lot of levels of, of flavor there too. Exactly, yeah, yeah. you build on that depth of flavor and keep flavoring your soup instead of stock or you know water mm -hmm. that it's a different flavor it's just the cauliflower. How long so. would you boil that for? Uh, vegetable stocks and cheese cheese broths things like that really only need to go about an hour hour and a half. Uh, chicken stocks we usually go five to six hours and then like beef and veal stocks we go overnight so depending on you know the different proteins mm -hmm. and things you're using the times change but vegetable ones are fairly quick I mean you get all the flavor and all the nutrients out of them pretty quickly, so overboiling them doesn't do a lot besides reduce it down. Mm -hmm. So much better to do this, Kelly, than to do a, a meat stock? Yeah, well, and also he's not adding a bunch of salt 
yeah. to the recipe, which is a big one. So he's using lots of herbs and spices in all of his recipes. So then you don't miss the salt, you don't miss the sodium, and that's better for you. So you have more flavor with your food and you're not having to add all the extra salt and the sodium, which you know is, is better for you in the long run as far as, far as heart health and blood pressure. And we, we use a lot of acids in place of some of the salt. I mean, it's a totally different flavor, but it mm -hmm. gives you that depth yep. to something that can help keep some of the okay. salt out. Okay, what's so. next? We're gonna get uh, cauliflower cut up. I've got my burner rolling here, and then we're gonna uh, start sauteing away. Cauliflower is sort of the it vegetable right now. <laughs> Kelly, I see a lot of cauliflower <laughs> recipes. Uh, what are we getting when we eat cauliflower, nutrition-wise? So, cauliflower is a good one. Um, you know, fiber, it's a vegetable. Cabbage, so um, good. Lots of the things that he's using tonight have folate, fiber, vitamin C, vitamin K is a big one. Potassium, you'll see in all the vegetables that we're doing tonight. Um, and you had mentioned about it's like the new it vegetable. So you'll see it maybe in uh, pizza crusts or mashed potatoes. A lot of the gluten-free stuff yes. is using <laughs> yeah, the starch exactly. and cauliflower. Right. Yeah, yeah. And Teresa had mentioned some breadsticks earlier. I tried it, yeah, yeah. it worked great. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's really, it's, um, it's so versatile, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. It's the new Brussels sprout, right? Is that what <laughs> Last year was Brussels sprouts, the year before yeah. it was kale, now kale. we're on the cauliflower. Yeah, exactly. You know, this time of year it'd be fun to do this show in the spring or summer just because of the, you know, the local vegetables and the produce and things that are growing in the season. This is that time of year where at least at the restaurant, we're leveraging quite a bit on squash and mushrooms and you know things like cauliflower that you can get year-round. There's not so much growing locally, obviously, now underneath all the snow. So. Well, and talk about that because you do use seasonal uh, vegetables and products at the restaurant. Yeah, we try our best to stick to everything you know seasonal, seasonal sustainably sourced, and um, you know go with what we can from the local community. I mean, all food tastes better and fresher, obviously, if it's not in a truck being uh, transported to you from somewhere else. So. We try and stick to that. We grow some things on site. We've got a little greenhouse and a fun little garden along the, uh, the outside of the restaurant there. So we keep that going as much as we can in spring and summer and source from as many local farmers and things as we can as, as the year goes on. Mm -hmm. And so. that's a good point too, Kelly. Before we used to do our meal planning and then go shopping, now we can find these great seasonal vegetables, bring them home, and decide how we're going to use them. Yes. Kind and of that's, flipping the switch on that. Right. Well, and it's a good way. I mean, I encourage most people to try and do local what's local, what's seasonal, one to give back to the people, you know, locally, and then you're going to probably get the best fruits and vegetables that are for that time of the season. You're gonna get the most nutrient-based because that's the right season for them. Yeah, they yeah. haven't been picked hundreds of miles away. Yeah, and, and they haven't and traveled to you. Most likely they've been picked at the right time. So, so what do we have in the pot here? So we've got the cauliflower, just a touch of olive oil, um, got a little bit of diced white onion, and then a bit of leek. Um, so leek, I brought one just for show, but when you do use them at home, the important thing is use the white part only, the green part goes in our broth there. So when you get in there, they're, uh, they're kind of corrugated, there's lots of layers to them. It's really important to kind of fan them out under some running water. They grow a lot of dirt into the middle and grime. Mm, really wash them well then. Yeah, not taste great, make your soup a little, <laughs> a little, uh, a little rough to eat. So <laughs> we're just going to kind of let this simmer down a little bit. And while it's going, I'll probably take over that soup next to you and kind of strain off the stock so we have that ready to go. Okay. Um, but what we're trying to do is not pick up a lot of color. We want that nice, bright cauliflower color. It just looks better in the bowl. Um, you can char it and get the color on there. It gives it a totally different flavor, and it's kind of a different soup in the end. But mm -hmm. for a purpose, roasting it, it and give you the same effect? Could you stick it yeah, in the you oven Yeah, you can roast it ahead it? of time. The reason I like to kind of let it caramelize in the pot is because all those sugars and things that you're cooking out of the cauliflower are going to stay in the pot. So we'll hit it with a little sherry to do what we call deglazing it in a bit. And what that's going to do is pick up all that caramelization mm. that's already in the pan and keep that flavor in there rather than the roasting pan that you used in the oven. So as often as you can stick to one pot, I think, in cooking, it, it kind of lets you build the flavors in mm -hmm. there. So. And, and Chef used olive oil. Good oil to choose. Yes. Good oil. Yes, yeah. that's a good oil. Mm -hmm. That's one of the better ones. Yeah. What other olive oils? oil. Yeah. Because um, we're seeing a lot of... Avocado oil and right. walnut oil and right. some different oils at the store right. now. Yeah, and all of those are good choices. Um, olive oil, you had mentioned almond oil, avocado oil, grapeseed oil, flaxseed oil. Um, Chef Travis will probably tell you some of those aren't as good for cooking, maybe better for a salad dressing. The, the smoke points on a lot yeah. of those are really low, so they burn right. and denature right. before. But they would be better for like a salad dressing or a vinaigrette that you're making or something like that. But those mm. would all be good choices. And we want to avoid. What well, you, anytime you want to try to avoid any sort of saturated fats, you know, so most of those oils are liquid at room temperature, so those would be good choices to choose versus when you cook like a, a pot roast or something and you have that hard oil that kind of sits there, those would be things we want to start trying to avoid. Those would be things more like saturated fats. So the oils that are room temperature 
um, or, or liquid at room temperature tend to be the best ones to choose for, which would be olive oil and avocado oil. Mm -hmm. Nut oils are good. And, then, and, and olive oil is a little more neutral in flavor. Is that why you chose it that? I mean, it still picks I mean, up a little flavor. Yeah, there's but. so many levels to olive oil that uh, we'll put a little garlic in here while we're talking and just a pinch of chili flakes. Uh, lots of different kinds of olive oil. You know, you can get nice, really bright, green, grassy tasting extra virgins. I really, you know, we use a really nice high quality oil for our dressings and things like that at Clover. It's from a company in California, actually a family called the Shabikas. Um, but it's not so great to cook with if you're going to sear a piece of meat or fish mm. because with all the protein that stays in those unfiltered, really nice extra virgins, it's the same thing that smoke point drops. So you actually get a bitter flavor if you cook it too long. So we use the really good extra virgin in this, and then we cut it with a you know a second pressing olive oil, or at home you know for cost sakes you can cut it with a little bit of canola olive oil just for bringing up that smoke point and okay. keeping it you know, keeping it from burning and giving you off flavors. So we got a little chili flake in there, a little bit of chopped garlic. Heat. Yep, just a touch. I use chili flake a lot in place of black pepper. Um, a for color in something like this, you're not going to pick up those little black specks that unless you strain it really fine. You can't ever get out. Maybe I just like the flavor better. It's you know it's more of a more of a just kind of baseline heat without that peppercorn flavor that kind of sits mm -hmm. in the back. So of your we're palate. layering flavors here. We're, we're just yep. adding on to each layer in this particular soup. Exactly. Put the garlic in a little bit after the onions and things because we want to let those cook down, bring out all those sugars. If we put the garlic in at the same time, it starts to burn and taste you know taste a little off and. Uh, astringent so I also love that you're doing larger batches tonight and there's a reason for that yeah and that's you know to get you through the week I mean that's how we cook at home a lot especially with the hours that I work as a chef and my wife goes to school you know it's good to kind of meal plan on your your days off get something set that you can just take in a hurry and you know pop in the microwave or in the oven real quick and have ready so yeah and that's how we get off track too Kelly right yes. we, we're busy yes. we're busy we have families right. yes. we're working and so some of those nights it's easier to hit the drive through. Right. But if we planned ahead a little bit more and made bigger batches, you yeah. can heat it up. It's kind of like studying for a test. Yeah. If you prepare <laughs> for the week, then you'll have these things for you. So you'll be less likely to go to McDonald's or yeah. something like that. You know it's in the fridge right. at home and it's ready yep. to go. Yeah. And sometimes people think it takes a long time, but if you just do it like on a Sunday or a Saturday when you have some time, then you're ready for the rest of the week. Take two hours one day yeah. instead of a half hour or 45 minutes. Right. Seven yeah. Days. It's yep. a, yeah. It's nice thing. So we're kind of letting that soften at this point. Um, we're going to get going on okay. kind of our next thing that will show us the salad. Uh, we're doing a little bit of wilted kale in our wheat berry salad. So what we want to do now is do what we call massaging the kale. We're going to give it a little bit of lemon juice and a little bit of salt. Just kind of rub it around and it's going to start to break down the fibers of that. So you're not really cooking it, you're just softening it. Okay. Um, it's going to add to the flavors of the vinaigrette and the salad, obviously, with the acid and things in there. But it's a, a nice way to get it to sort of break down and just not be that toothsome kale. That yeah, kale can be a little on the chewy side. Yeah. So. yeah. so we've taken all the roots and stems out of it because no matter what you do aside from cooking, those never really soften. And at the restaurant, if we do cook it, we usually uh, remove those anyway because they're really hard to get mm -hmm. to. Have you kid tested down. these recipes? <laughs> uh, a few of these. I know, yeah. our, I know our owner's kids love the wheat berry salad. We had that at a at the restaurant for a bit and she was taking that home for them. Um, the kefta is pretty uh, pronounced in flavor. It's got all the curry spices and things like that. So you need a little more adventurous of a kid for that <laughs> yeah. one. And I think the cauliflower soup's pretty easy and approachable. So yeah. But introducing good. kids early to these foods. It's a good, it's it's a a good, good idea. Yeah. 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 Cause they might not like it initially or the right. thing, but this is the sort of thing you're serving. Right. And if you keep trying it, they may not like it the first time. But trying it again just a little bit just for them to see it or maybe help prepare in the kitchen can kind of encourage them to try new things yeah and getting them involved seems to help mm -hmm. too yep and you know, we don't have kids of our own quite yet but uh i used to babysit for a friend's kid and we used to make pasta together and that was like her favorite thing yeah, was doing get fresh in the pasta kitchen. Mm -hmm. so we'd get in there and get the kitchen aid roller and start rolling it through there and you know it was a fun little project for her and she got into cooking and eating some different stuff yeah, you know, it didn't matter what you put in the pasta to eat what they point. make yeah. yeah they love doing that so just a touch of salt and that lemon juice. We're just going to rub this around real good, kind of get it in there, and we'll just let that sit until it's uh, time to go on the salad. So in the soup, I've got a little bit of sherry in there. Like I said, we're picking up some of that caramelization from the bottom of the pot. And, uh, you know, the sherry gives it a nice round flavor. You know, we use a ton of different stuff in the restaurant for cooking. We use white wine, vermouth, red wine, sherry. Sherry's got a cool little nuttiness to it that sort of works in something with the deep flavor of the cauliflower. So. Is it a regular sherry or cooking sherry? Uh, we use a dry sherry, so okay. it's not a cooking sherry. Anytime you see cooking wine at the store, they've added yeah. salt into those. Uh. 
And, you know, A, they just kind of taste bad, and B, I'd like to be able to control the salt in my food myself, right. not rely on, you know, if you buy broth at the store, I always buy the unsalted broth for the uh -huh. same reason. And the Speaking alcohol that, cooks out, so thing. there's no worries right. there. Yep, no worries for the kids. Anytime you get steam out of it, the alcohol the is basically gone. So That's got, a beautiful broth. It almost, it looks like a chicken broth. Yeah. Yeah, the colors doesn't. are beautiful. Yeah, it does. Get a ton of color, a ton of depth of flavor, and it just tastes like, you know, pure cauliflower and nice herbs, so rather than, you know, adding the herbs in there and a piece of cheesecloth mm -hmm. like we sometimes would, it's sort of all built into the stock already. It makes it really easy. So, Kelly, this is our jumping off point tonight if we've been a little lax in getting started for the new year right. and, and this <laughs> healthy eating that we want, really want to try and do. But if we start introducing um, some of these foods and the, the vegetables that, that Chef is preparing tonight, we'll tend to probably start eating, leaning this direction, right? and if we work these into our diet, then maybe we'll start eliminating, rather, rather than things. eliminating things, start this way. Right, right. That, I guess that's what I'm getting at. Right, and a lot of times with New Year's resolutions, that's what we do. We go, you know, gung-ho, we're going to do all this, yeah. and we get overwhelmed. So starting with simple things like adding more green vegetables to your diet, or maybe trying to just make a stock at home, those things kind of starting to work them into your habits, your new behaviors. So then it just becomes your everyday thing that you do. I brush my teeth, you know, I eat my vegetables kind of thing. And so a lot of times when it comes January 1, we want to do everything overnight, and we get overwhelmed, and we're like, yeah. Pfft. Yeah. So starting Abandoned with ship. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So starting with one good healthy habit, get that one down, and then do the next one. And working good vegetables, trying something new each week would be a good way to kind of start doing that. Exactly. Yeah. Kind of build the habit slowly mm -hmm. over time yeah. and get yourself in some momentum. So All right. What's next? Soup's going on. We've got the kale resting. We're going to kind of start our rice to go along with the kefta. So we're doing a uh, turmeric and coconut rice. Uh, using light coconut milk, just a little bit. So it's about a quarter of coconut milk in addition to the water. So just for flavor. Um, the light coconut milk's a little better, but coconut milk is a saturated fat and it's got a little, you know, little extra calories. So we try and tone it down, but give you something, you know, some little reward in there. Uh, we use a little bit of dry turmeric in there. Um, the water itself, uh, just a touch of salt, and then when it's all finished, we'll put in a little bit of uh, parsley and mint. So we'll get that going. It takes about 20 minutes. We're using basmati rice, just white basmati. Works better for, you know, the timing here today. You can use brown rice at home. Brown basmati is particularly good. It just need to adjust that cooking time and your, uh, your water level. But really, when you're going off the package, just take and substitute whatever amount of water it says. Quarter of that in okay. coconut milk and follow those directions. You can season it up otherwise yeah, however gonna, you want. So. Oh, the, I can imagine the flavors. Um, if we have an it vegetable, we also have an it spice, spice. and it's probably... Turmeric. Yeah. yeah, seeing a lot uh, of uh, recipes that include turmeric right now. It's supposed to be better for inflammation, right. that sort of thing. Do we know if yeah. that actually works? or? Well, I think with a lot of things, because we do tend to have a lot of it things. <laughs> and so I think what happens is, is we really get excited about certain things. And so it's, you know, it's, it is very good for those things. Do we know if it's a cure-all? Right now, yeah. we need probably for the research, but it is better than doing a bunch of salt and, and adding that, you're adding flavor again. And so, yeah, yeah you can have those benefits um, with also making a behavior change. Instead of reaching for the salt shaker, you're using the herbs and spices like turmeric. And so, yeah, there are some benefits to it, but. Yeah. And what's nice with it being so popular is now you can go to Safeway or Fred Meyer and you can find fresh turmeric. Right. You know, we're using dry today just for convenience sake, but fresh is great. You grate it just like ginger. You can substitute almost the same amount back it over. Fresh. That's neat. It is looks it a like, root? Yeah, it looks like yeah. a little ginger root, a little bit smaller, but kind of a gangly, dirty looking <laughs> root thing. But the flavor <laughs> of the fresh afraid. stuff's yeah. awesome. And I'm sure the health benefits in the fresh right. definitely outweigh the, the dry. Yep. Yeah, and it's got a gorgeous color to it. So we're getting that color, that uh, the eye appeal with our food is yeah. what we also want too. If it right. looks good, we're, we're drawn to it. Yes, and we a lot of times people think nutrition, good nutrition has to be cardboard, but it doesn't. You know, you can have lots of good flavors and lots of good colors. I mean, you should eat from the rainbow is kind of what we normally say, and you should be having lots of different colors. You know, when you go to the grocery store, you want to look for the most vibrant color of fruits and vegetables that you can find, because those ones have most of the nutrients in them. So yeah, adding color is another way to, to make your food exciting. You should enjoy it. We don't want to over enjoy it, but you know, we, we want to make good choices and this is a good way to try to do that. Mm -hmm. I think typically there's a rule of thumb where that balance of color in your vegetables gives you different, different vitamins and different right. essential things that you need. You right. So, okay. can work sense. so we're waiting for this to come to a boil. Uh, my lovely wife, Karina, is going to bring up my next oh, tray okay. of stuff so we can get going and on Kelly the salad here. Shift to this, this way here. We'll take that from you. Thank you. So, Kelly, you, you briefly mentioned balance and eating from the rainbow. That's a great visual. I love yeah. that visual. That's, that's a great way to 
to reference it. Portion size, I mean, even though we're eating healthy, we still want to be careful about right. our portions because there are still calories involved if we're trying right. to lose weight or maintain our weight. Right, yes. So I always kind of use an example of there's organic cookies, and just because it's organic, should I eat 10 of them? No, so we still just want to make sure that we're portioning out our food. You know, it's good food, it's going to taste good. Um, when you're choosing healthier foods that have good proteins and good fats in them, most of the time you can eat a little bit better to, to satisfy you versus wanting to overeat if you're having something really high in, in carbs or sugar. You know, you want more. It just is kind of how our body works. But if you've got good flavors and, and good, you know, good ingredients, that are giving you good benefits, it's probably going to satisfy you a little bit more, and so you're not always going to want more. But plating your stuff before you go to the table, you know, finishing everything before you go back for seconds, having some water, you know, enjoying your meal, not trying to go real fast, you know, is part of that portion control because it's still very important even if you're eating really healthy food. Yeah, again, we're, we're all guilty of that. Right. Um, <laughs> eating too fast right. and being too busy to, right. to enjoy a meal. Right. It's so important. Yeah. So okay. We'll put our salad together. This one's one of my favorites. Ideally, this kale would uh, kind of macerate a little longer than the citrus, but I think it's going to be great for today, and it's definitely fine to eat just raw. It's more of a textural thing. Um, so we've got some local wheat berries. We use uh, Joseph's Greenery out of the Palouse. Uh, wheat berries are great. They keep the whole kernel on, so it's got all that protein. It keeps all the vitamins in. It's not really a processed wheat food, which is really good. Um, if you do cook them, we try and soak them overnight in water like you would beans. It's going to soften them, cut the cooking time from a couple hours to about 30 minutes or so. Um, so just boiled in really lightly salted water and then cooled down. The salad's great. It seems to last in the fridge for about a whole week. Uh, tons of flavors to it, and you can kind of play with the, uh, the dressings, the vegetables that go mm -hmm. in it. So today we're just going to do the wheat berries in there. So we've got well, and texturally, too, we're getting a little chew in there. Yeah. We've got the, the crispness of, of little the chew, kale. A little chew, a little crunch, yep. yeah. Um, and then we've got some mushrooms, uh, for the sake of time, already sautéed. Oop, and we're boiling over. In the, uh, in the recipe, it's got the cooking procedure for the mushrooms, so just in a sauté pan. A little light bit of olive oil, some garlic, some fresh herbs. Uh, we do a little bit of sherry or some white wine at the end just to soften them. And how many varieties? You've got a whole Yeah, so we've got a nice little mix here. We've got uh, hedgehog mushrooms, which are a true wild mushroom, kind of a cousin to the chanterelle. We've got local cremini, or not local, but creminis, which are the uh, little baby portobellas you see at the store. Then we have a mix of some cultivated, uh, kind of fancier mushrooms. So we've got smedgy, brown beech, and some uh, cardoncello, which are the king oyster oh, mushroom. Okay. So we get different blends for the year based on what's in season. We've got some great companies out of the Seattle area that have foragers that work for them and uh -huh. pick and some I fun can stuff find for us. Locally? Um, yeah, actually, yeah. Fred Meyer right now has a really great mushroom oh, selection. Great. They have chanterelles usually before I start getting them in the restaurant somehow now, which is amazing because you couldn't find them years ago there. So a little bit of mushrooms. Uh, we've got some pumpkin seeds or pepitas, just lightly toasted. Uh, didn't do any oil on these, just hit them with a little bit of salt in the saute pan over medium-low heat and just kept it kind of going. And that brings out the flavor when you hit them in the pan like that, give them a little roast? Yeah, it yeah. gives them a little char, a little more uh, texture. So we're putting our rice, putting our rice in. in there, okay. and we're just going to drop that to low, put the lid on it, and kind of uh, let it do its thing. And basmati cooks faster than a long grain or a other type rice? Uh, Is that what you're saying? About the same, yeah. Oh. So I would, you know, if I was at home, I would set the timer on this one for about 17 minutes, and then I kind of cut the heat and sort of let it, uh, just let it steam in there on its own for a little bit before we whisk it up. Okay. All right. Our salad. Yeah, so We've back, got the dressing the that goes on. Yep, a little bit of Parmesan cheese. So in the recipe that's online, we said, you know, kind of your vinaigrette of choice. Um, vinaigrettes are a nice, healthy way to do it. Um, this one here is something we make with a chili garlic oil that we make at the restaurant. And it's real simple. It's just a uh, one egg yolk, chili garlic oil, a little bit of sherry vinegar, and just a touch of, uh, touch of salt in there. So mm -hmm. really good little quick dressing that we can whip up with something on hand. Mm -hmm. This would be actually a really good um, thing to do for Meatless Monday. Like a lot of families like oh, to do yeah. Meatless Mondays because you're going to have some good protein in there and fat and then vegetables. And if you wanted to add something to it, like a protein source, it would also be a good thing to have. Yeah. Like you said, you meal prep it. You know, if you had it, you probably wouldn't put the dressing in it. But, Ooh. you Does know, it hold up with dressing on it even? Um, we'll kind of put the dressing in day yeah. to day. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. leave that on the side. We'll grill up a bunch of chicken breast at the beginning of the week and sort of a... Uh, and that would, yeah, that would work good. Yeah. I, mean, you could I, would, I would totally eat that for mm -hmm. a meal. <laughs> yeah, and you could do a meatless money, like I said, or add chicken to it. or. Well, like I said, you can change the vegetables, you can change mm -hmm. the cheeses. There's yeah. a ton of different things you can do with it. So. Yeah, be adventurous. That's yeah, exactly. Great. Have some can fun you do with anything it, right? wrong here, Travis, as far as, you know, if I've got a different type of cheese in the refrigerator or... 
uh, a different. You no, know. not really. Goat cheese is great in there, yeah. especially with mushrooms. Goat cheese works particularly well. Um, it kind of lends itself to just about anything. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've done it with cauliflower in here. We've done it with broccoli. I've done it with grilled leeks. It's you know, kind of depending on the season, just about everything works. Zucchini and squash in the summer yeah. kind of great in there. Well, sometimes I'll open the fridge and go, well, I don't have yes. one ingredient. What can I substitute? Yeah. What right. can I throw in here that, you know, That's gives me the same effect? Usually how our meal planning starts is kind of clearing <laughs> out the fridge and figuring yeah. out what's in Sounds there. Sounds really that, uh, familiar. Yeah. What's in there to get rid of and play with for the week and keep it fairly healthy. I want to get to this email from uh, Megan in Spokane. She says, do frozen vegetables have enough nutrients in them to be okay to use in the winter when fresh ones might not be available? Um, actually, yes, they do. And a lot of times people don't do anything that's frozen because they think that there's no nutrient um, density in it. And they actually do, especially if, if you can't get good local vegetables in the season, that's a good way to get them um, because they're usually picked at the right time and the way they're processed, they're blanched, and then all those good things that we eat them for kind of get locked in there. Mm -hmm. Flash frozen a lot yeah. of the time, mm -hmm. so it, it hits yeah, them. Yeah, so they all kind of get those good things in there that we need to have, and so and then you buy them in the store. So yeah, it would be a good alternative, especially if you're thinking, well, I can't buy any vegetables. What am I supposed to have? We'd much rather you have frozen vegetables than potato chips or crackers or yeah, yeah. so yeah. that would be a much better choice than something else that you think well maybe that's just not good enough mm -hmm. and what about canned yeah so canned you can do kind of the same thing the thing you have to be careful with is the sodium again so lots of lots of added sodium I mean they have no salt added and they have um, low sodium you could also dump them out and kind of rinse them out you know in a colander if you kind of wanted to get some more of that sodium off of there but again it's one of those things that that would be an alternative to having nothing then you know obviously like canned corn wouldn't be our first pick but you know they do have like peas and broccoli now and they have asparagus different things carrots so yeah okay very good great question well, I'm gonna start chopping onions for our uh, kefta kebabs oh, okay. here. We... Kelly and I will start crying. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah no ventilation in yeah. here, right? Isn't there a trick that you can do that doesn't make you cry? Well, I have those onion goggles at home. That <laughs> There's a bunch of tricks and none yeah. of them work. <laughs> 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 so says mm. Chef tonight, yeah. Processed food is something we're obviously trying to avoid if we're wanting to kick off the year eating healthier. Right. Yeah, how much damage are we doing to ourselves by eating a lot of processed food? So again, you're going back to a lot of added salt and a lot of added sugar. And any time that you can, you really want to try not to. Mm -hmm. You know, we already eat enough salt and enough sugar in our diet, just in the American diet alone. So any time that you cannot add any additional salt or, or sugar, that would be the that would be the number one goal. And most processed food is that way. It, it's just unavoidable. Mm -hmm. And it's still so tricky. I know that there's right. um, there's some. Uh, tricks in place to, to read labels, you right. know, but I still have difficulty knowing what I'm supposed to be looking at and right. the milligrams and the numbers. It's kind of overwhelming right. to be a better label reader. Right, and actually they're redoing the food nutrition label and I should think it should come out soon as far That's as making it more thinking. user friendly. Um, and so you're mostly looking at calories and, and fat and salt and sugar. And again, going back to basics as are they good types of fat? You know, is it unsaturated fats is what you're looking for? It, is most of the carbohydrates coming from sugar versus a good mm -hmm. complex carbohydrate? Um, if there's 175 ingredients in it, should we be eating it versus something that maybe only has five or six? Mm -hmm. So just starting to kind of get comfortable by just looking and kind of seeing what's what's on there. Okay, we're rocking and rolling now. Rocking and rolling, so we're getting into our kefta kebabs. Um, again, kind of a, a play on a Lebanese dish. It usually uses beef, but again, to keep the, uh, the calories low and still get that good source of protein. Uh, we're using some nice ground turkey, which we have right here. And Kelly, talk about the difference between using the ground turkey to, as opposed to a, a lean ground beef. So, well, um, it's mostly because of the fat content is why most people use the ground turkey. I mean, you can get some pretty good lean grass-fed meats, um, and they tend to be pretty lean too, but this is just another alternative to people who may not want to do red meat. Um, a mm -hmm. lot of people either choose not to for multiple reasons, um, and so it's, it's a good alternative to have a low-fat protein source, a lean protein source. Okay. Exactly. And ground chicken works just as well mm -hmm. for this, and this recipe works great with beef if you're yeah. indulging in that that day. Right. So we've got a pound of ground turkey. Um, you saw me really finely mince up a white onion. We use half of an onion per pound of turkey. 
Uh, nice to cut it really, really small like that because you're going to form these into little kebabs. So if you have big pieces of uh, okay. big pieces of onion in there, it so gets a little unruly. Babies, huh? Yeah, mince them up real nice. And then we've got a whole slew of spices over here. We've got smoked paprika, a little bit of chili powder, some cumin, and some yellow curry spice. I love so curry. Paprika here. <laughs> And this is one that, you know, over time, you just start kind of clearing out the spice cabinet and playing <laughs> right. with things in there that work and really Get learning. Get adventurous, I mean, yeah. Talk about clearing out the pantry for meal planning. The spice cabinet works great and all these things. You know, it's always so much better to make your own custom blends and things like that at home than buying the ones in the store that have a bunch of added salt and right. anti-caking agents and weird things right. like that. So it's nice to kind of invest in a, a good little amount of spices. And well, and nice to have familiar. all of these things now available to us. It wasn't right. that many years ago. It was hard to find a lot right. of items like the, the great spices and, and some of the food we're preparing tonight. So now we have it available to us. Yeah, to be able to just go to the grocery store and buy chanterelle mushrooms is a pretty amazing <laughs> thing to me. I remember when you had to know a guy that went hiking <laughs> through the woods and wouldn't tell you where his no spots guy, were. No guy and, yeah. Exactly, yeah, you go out with those mushroom hunter guys. They're pretty picky about their spaces. So we'll do a little nice uh, fresh Italian parsley in here. Curly parsley works fine too. Um, we've thrown mint, basil, some of those things in the mix over the years too, but I think the parsley is mostly just kind of traditional and works really well with the flavors in here. Is there a difference in flavor between the two parsleys? Uh, not so much in flavor, oh. just mostly textural, mm -hmm. I think, yeah. <laughs> We use the flatter leaf stuff just because, you know, they still looks a little nicer on the plate. It's easy to get, you know, nice small cuts on. And then just like you're doing a meatloaf, we have a tiny little bit of breadcrumbs in here. Oh, okay. Just uh, toasted sourdough. And that's just going to be kind of a binder to keep it together on the skewer. And then one nice fresh farm egg from our friends over at Hangman Valley Farms. Who also at times provide us really cool chicken to do this dish with. And then we're just going to, uh, hence the gloves, kind of work this like you would a meatloaf at home. Is there such thing as overworking it? No, not, not really at all on this one. What you're going to kind of want to do is get this all together into a nice, uh, you know, nice combined mass. And then you're going to make your skewers and kind of let them sit in the fridge for a little bit before you mm -hmm. cook them. You know, let that, uh, that bread soak up the egg and soak up, you know, the spices and things like that and really kind of form so it doesn't just fall apart on mm -hmm. you once you hit the grill. This is another great way to get kids involved. Let them mix mm -hmm. the, 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 the meat because yeah. you get their let hands them get in dirty, there. Right? Yeah, yeah. They love that. Love it. It's good uh, prelude to yard work, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> get them in all, all those chores. Yeah. Then as far as skewering these things, I always soak my skewers in a little bit of water. Um, especially the uh, the end that's not going in the food. You can do these on a barbecue, you can do them in a pan, you can do them on a griddle like we're doing here. Summertime, I love to barbecue them, but if you don't soak the skewers, they just start on fire and then you end up <laughs> re-skewering, which is never fun. So all we're doing is little uh, little two ounce balls of this, working it into a, kind of a nice little, uh, for lack of a better word, maybe a football shape, oh, kind of a torpedo okay. shape. Pretty traditional. Like I said, it feels- And that's gonna cook better on the grill that way? Or? Yeah. And it's just kind of the traditional way oh. of doing it. It works really great for your lunches. It's kind of a, a quick pick up and go type of thing. We're just going to skewer them like that and then I would set them all out on a sheet tray, throw them in the refrigerator and like I said, let them sit for mm -hmm. about 30 minutes or so before you go to cook them. For the sake of TV, we've got some, uh, some already skewered up over here that we'll get rolling on the grill. And these are going to take on this griddle probably about 15 minutes. Oh, you know, okay. being poultry, you want to make sure they are cooked all the way through. Um, if you're unsure, use a thermometer at home. Check them out, pull them off at 165 degrees, which is kind of your go-to poultry temperature. Do you advise people to have a, a thermometer so they can check Definitely, the yeah. I, I think it's crucial for, you know, especially the, you know, the foodborne illness stuff on things like this, making sure things are cooked thoroughly. But also if you're making steaks and things like that at home, it's really nice just to be able to make sure you're hitting that perfect medium rare. We use these, uh, these digital guys, kind of like this at the restaurant. They're great, they're really affordable now, and they're accurate in like five seconds, so it's kind of a nice way to You don't to have go. to read the little dial. And right. Yeah, and you don't difficult. have to calibrate them every single right? time you <laughs> use them. Exactly, exactly. Now, I have a quick question as far as meal planning goes. Sure. Now, can those be made in larger batches and freeze, and then people can... Yeah, they actually or... do freeze pretty well. You want to wrap them up pretty tightly just oh, okay. to avoid, you know, the frostbite okay. thing on the outside of them. But yeah, and then cooking them for the week, I mean, I would just kind of cook them all at once and, okay. you know, reheat as you go. They, because it's a ground turkey, it seems to keep its moisture content pretty nice. They don't dry out too terribly. Too They're obviously better right. fresh, but. Right. Yeah, we've got, you know, Super Bowl parties. None of us are going to be right. watching. But <laughs> Super Bowl parties coming up. Poor that would Seahawks. be a great <laughs> item to serve at a Super yeah. Bowl party. Huh? You know, oh, because, totally, yeah. yeah. 
And people won't get mad because they're not going to notice because it's going to taste really good with all the flavor. Oh, that's right. Yeah, nobody knows this they're one's not... healthy until you tell <laughs> right. them. Right, yes, the trick. yes. It's probably well, why it works for right. the kids, too. That's the thing, right? too. As soon as you tell somebody something's healthy, they're turned off. Right, right. It's yeah. just good food. Right, yeah. It's just good food. Uh, I think we've got a phone. Do we have a phone call? We have Fran from Calgary calling. Is Fran on the line? On. Hi. Hi, it's your regular friend from Calgary. Hello, how are you? Hey, how are you? <laughs> good, it's good to hear from you. You have a question? Well, I'm sure this smells. I have a question about using the kale. I had read that using kale raw is not necessarily a good idea, that it's got either uh, phytates or exhalates, and they, they block um, they, they block you getting the vitamins and minerals from whatever else you're eating, it's better to have it slightly cooked. Hmm. Had you have you heard anything on that, Kelly? No, I haven't heard as far as if you, it sounds like if you cook it longer, you'll get more nutrients is what she's... Well, and she's, uh, I think, Fran, you're also saying that it can block getting other nutrients? Yeah, the phytates or the axalates in it. Huh. Well, phytates sometimes can, but I think you'd probably have to eat a lot, a lot of, of it. it. Yeah. So when a lot of times you do that, you have to eat some of these things in a large amount. I mean, if you were having a kale salad once a week or something, or a couple times a week, you'd probably be okay. But if you're having a breakfast, lunch, and dinner seven days a week, you know, <laughs> ha you'd have to have it a large amounts of time. But I think if you have it in all in moderation, it probably it would probably be okay. Most people probably eat kale cooked down anyways. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. and by using the lemon juice on there, it sort of breaks, breaks it, it down, down in the same way yeah. as if, if you were cooking it. So I don't know if that would have an effect as well. Yeah, I'm not sure nutritionally what it does, but it definitely softens yeah. it for the palate. Yeah. And I, don't, I haven't heard that it blocks. I mean, I think you'd have to have a ton of it again. Mm -hmm. Like, it could, but it, you'd have to have a lot. I mean, some medications with heart, like vitamin K and those kinds of things, that may be an issue or cumin and stuff. But um, as far as that goes, I'm not, I haven't heard that. Okay, very good. Great question, Fran. I've never heard that that before. Yeah, thank you for calling. All right, what do we got so going? So we're just chopping up a little bit of uh, mint and parsley to finish I out I our rice. Mint. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty very pungent, right? aromatic. Yeah. And we're just we throw this in at the end. If you put it in the beginning, it's just going to turn black, and all that flavor is just going to evaporate in the air with the rest of the water. So we've got the rice. We went about our 17 minutes. It's nice and. Uh, Oh, nice and cooked beautiful. over, and then we just let it steam to a finish. So yeah, you get that kind of cool uh, bright yeah, yellow color, which is sort of hard to beat. And at this point, we're just going to kind of fluff it up a little bit with a fork or a spoon or whatever you have handy. And we'll put that mint and parsley in and just sort of let that sit as it finishes steaming out. And Kelly, the difference between using a white rice and a brown rice um, it usually comes down to just the nutrient density. So the white rice has usually been processed and enriched, um, whereas the brown rice, or when they're in a whole grain, they, they haven't been. So they still have all the original vitamins and minerals, fiber in them. Um, and the white, white rice won't have as much. Okay. Because I have tried the, the brown basmati. It's delicious. Yeah. Yeah, if you like great. to go. It's got a real nutty flavor to it. It's great. Definitely be prepared for a little longer cooking time. Yeah. I mean, brown yeah. basmati is going to take you 50 minutes or so from start to <laughs> yeah, finish. Yeah, it does. But yeah, I'd prefer it at home most of the time. Anytime you can get brown rice or things like the wheat berries that they keep the whole of the grain intact, you're going to get a lot better flavor, better texture, I think, and also More better nutritional value. Yeah, we're getting a good sizzle going over yeah, here. Give these guys a little roll. I can't even describe to everybody the smell. <laughs> that they're going. It does smell good. I always wish we had smell a vision because. <laughs> Yeah, it's incredible. Curry powder's kind of a cheat that way, you know? <laughs> so we'll get a nice little try on that. That's exactly what you're looking for, is a nice light little bit of caramelization. Yeah, Give beautiful. it a bit of a crunch on the outside because it's going to be nice and soft through. Mm -hmm. I think so don't have your grill up too high because you kind of want to do a Yeah, about medium high is going to keep you where you want to be. So I'm going to spin around and puree the soup. Um, at this point, got the cauliflower in there. It's getting nice and soft. I don't want to cook it down until it's total mush because I want some texture in the soup. We're not using heavy cream like you would a lot of times in a bisque. So that cauliflower is going to add a lot of that mm -hmm. texture and that thickness to the soup. So I'm going to get it to what we call al dente, which you know in French means to the tooth. So it's going to have a little bit of a bite to it and not be fully cooked and mushy. Otherwise mm -hmm. you'd get sort of So if I test that out. with a fork, it just, just starting it to just go Just start into to it? go through okay. it, yeah, and maybe get a little bit of resistance in the middle. Um, one thing to season it at the end, like we talked about, using a little bit of acid in place of some of that salt. Sherry vinegar is one of my favorite ingredients for soups and things like that. It's not a, not overly acidic. It's still got some richness to it because it's aged in barrel. So a touch of that, and we'll give it a little squeeze of lemon just to sort of up the acid in there a little bit. Mm -hmm. 
And I, I like to use lemon in, in, well, in place of salt, basically, because yeah. you do get that flavor. Yeah, that flavor. Yeah, it's hard to describe. It's definitely it, yeah, not saltiness, it's, but it's... Exactly. But that little acid, as you mentioned. Yeah, especially when we get guests in with dietary restrictions and things like that that can't mm -hmm. have any salt or any seasonings, people allergic to pepper, citrus and vinegars are usually the first thing I go to because you add another depth to whatever you're doing. Yeah, yeah your food does not have to be bland by any means. No. Mm -hmm. No. And you don't have to just use salt. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying my best. I'm a, a, a <laughs> yeah, I'm a saltaholic myself, so I try all the time to work in these different techniques. Definitely. And a lot of times you're just used to the flavor too, so you're used to the salt taste, and so well, it's and just I like had, I had the habit of grabbing the salt, salt shaker right. before I even tasted taste. my food. Yeah, that's you, bad. Yeah, yeah don't you just have do that. to send your taste buds through training. <laughs> exactly. Retraining. Right. Retraining. Yeah. One yeah. of the things none of us chefs love are the salt and pepper shakers on the table. It's <laughs> Kind of people telling it's us so we don't know what we're doing. Well, you know? and that's what finally somebody said is, you know, you're insulting the, the cook or the chef when you grab that salt shaker before you've tasted your food. I learned the hard way. Yeah. <laughs> learned the hard way. Kelly, are you a fan right now? There's so many of the these fresh food delivery services, which are sort of, you know, helping families and couples eat healthier by having meals in a box right. delivered to their door. And some of them look, you know, very new, you know, healthy it and nutritionally good, yeah. Yeah, balanced. Um, yeah, so I would say I, I would rather you spend money on a box of fresh fruits and vegetables and, and lean proteins that's delivered to your house versus McDonald's or Wendy's or Burger King. And it seems like that is where we're moving. I think it's a convenience thing and, and it's been consumer driven. Now we have more healthy options and I think this is what's coming from that, which yes, I would prefer that they had a nice stir fry versus yeah. You know, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So it, it seems that's the direction that we're moving. And so, yeah, I would be more inclined to say do that. I think, you know, the best thing to do is go to your farmer's market in the spring and summer and find a farm that does a CSA where they build you a box of whatever's in season. And most of them will tailor it around your family size mm -hmm. and what you're doing. And it kind of leads back to what we were talking about earlier, where you let the produce dictate the meals yeah. for the week. So you open that box and see what you got. And it's kind of a fun adventure to figured out it's how we cook in the restaurant because we leverage on so many local people and local farms and seasonality that a lot of times you don't know what your dinner special is until the farmer shows up or the produce delivery shows up and you start going through things. Right. And going, oh, you must love that challenge. Cool. That's the best that? part of the day. Yeah. yeah, coming up with the things. I mean, we love our menu and what we do day to day, but that spontaneous creativity is always the most fun for us. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. And most of them have recipes in there too. So that's another way that they can yeah. learn how to cook it. So maybe they can look for these the next time they go to the grocery store. Yeah. Yeah, Link Foods in town here, linc.com is a great place to look for some of that stuff. We use them at the restaurant, but I think you can also get on as just your uh, your average family yeah. and find some things on there. And they, they work with a whole variety of local farmers, growers, ranchers, and have just a ton of great stuff that's in there. Yeah, yeah, it's, that's it's a great It's kind of a chef's idea. dream shopping around on there. Mm -hmm. So we give these guys a little love and then we'll uh, puree our soup really quick. Okay. Well, the internet has opened up a whole new world my daughters didn't want to get in the kitchen and learn to cook with me, but they can get online and watch a video. Right. <laughs> and, and they're actually better cooks than I am now because of that. But it's opened up a whole new world in that regard. And a lot of the cooking shows, too, that we're now seeing have become so popular. Right, right. So it, it's helping us explore these yeah. things and, and venture out a little bit more. Yeah. I think, again, a lot of it's coming back from the consumer again. We're now really health conscious and we're paying attention and so we're, you know, we're demanding more yeah. good things, good programs or, or locally grown foods and so we want more health. Like we found like good nutrition is going to be helpful for us yeah. and so we want more of that. Yeah. Even from our restaurant menus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, from everything. Mm -hmm. We want to know what's in our food now. We want to know what we're eating. We want to know if this is good for us or not. Yeah, excellent. You're making a lot of noise back there, Chef. Yeah, yeah. sorry about that. <laughs> But, but it's it smells good. You're it making us really good, good food. We're not complaining <laughs> yeah. by any means. Not by any means. I'm going to make sure these aren't getting too brown on you. I think we're probably okay. just about ready yeah, they, the, the smells are incredible. Yeah, it smells really good. Really good. So you basically, what you're doing, Chef, is building us a whole... We've got pretty much every element of a meal covered here if we wanted to have several courses. Soup, salad, yeah. and entree. You can yeah. do the whole thing. I don't know that it's the most cohesive menu I've ever written, but... <laughs> <laughs> They're all things that work pretty well. So this is our, so mm -hmm. basically it was the stock and the cauliflower. Yep, a little bit of sherry, a little bit of citrus, uh, some chili flake in there. We had some leek and some onion. Gosh. 
a light little bit of salt just to give it a bit of flavor. And again, the recipes will be posted at ksps.org under the Health Matters uh, banner, so be sure you check out the recipes, print them off, try them because yeah. uh, they're incredible. And then a little garnish on here is uh, what we call a salsa verde, kind of a nice little all-purpose sauce that we use at the restaurant. This has tarragon, uh, mint, a little bit of dill, a little bit of basil, and some fresh parsley, uh, champagne vinegar, and a little bit of capers. Oh, that's so Extra beautiful. <laughs> Then we like to add something with a little texture to any pureed soup like that. So we have a little bit of fried leek. And this again is that oh. white part, the bottom part of the leek. Uh -huh. uh, just lightly fried. We use uh, just a nice little pan full of canola oil. Bring it up to about 350, give it a fry, and just toss in seasoning of your choice. Oh my gosh. So. Beautiful. So appealing. This little cauliflower soup. I'm about to grab a spoon and a fork here and go for it. But <laughs> there I'll, I'll wait. Yeah. <laughs> We're all. Okay. All right. So now we're, now we're on to we're... Uh, plating entrees as soon as we're, as soon as okay. we're ready here. Oh, we wanted to take a caller. We've got Lewis from Moses Lake. Hey, Lewis. Hi. Uh, my question is, when you buy the tomatoes in the store at this time of the year, they're lacking flavor, but are they still good nutritionally? That's a mm. great question. Um, yeah, so it goes back again to picking seasonal vegetables when you can. You're going to have some of the nutrient um, benefits from it, but maybe not, again, at the heightened of, you know, the season or where they came from, again, you know, if, if they're traveling a long way. So, yeah, it, it, you're going to get some benefit to it. And they, the taste is off because they've probably been picked at a different time than maybe they normally would be. Um, and so, again, doesn't mean you shouldn't have it. Mm -hmm. um, you just, again, trying to get all the colors in your diet again, um, maybe switching to something more seasonal. That's and I've actually heard too that a canned tomato can actually have more mm -hmm. nutritional yeah. value. Than mm -hmm. We switched totally to canned and uh, preserved tomatoes, so we use like oven-dried tomatoes packed okay. in olive oil, things like that this time of year. You know, the, uh, I think the produce industry's dirty little tomato seekers, this time of year all those things are picked green and they're actually hit with gas or they're kind of aged in a truck mm. or in the box. So they never get to ripeness on the vine, which is why they taste so much different. And I'm sure that right. has some impact on the nutritional value. So I think buying a high quality canned product, look for things, you know, nice San Marzano tomatoes. There's a company you'll see in most stores called Muir Glen. They pick things at the peak of the season, you know, package them when they're ripe and all those vitamins and things stay in there. So I think it's a lot better alternative. I mean, mm -hmm. a tomato now and a tomato in summer are two totally different yeah. animals. So I'd rather save myself for the real thing. And yeah, then... yeah. And watch for salt and, you know, right. make sure you're getting a good product if you're going to buy the can. So, right. exactly. but that's a great question. Yeah, yeah. I want to try the soup. Excellent, you try that. And I'm going to start getting soup. stuff together for our teeny spoon. sauce. I'm going to try it. You want to try it? Kelly's like, don't leave me out of this. Soup spoon. Okay. Let's see. I can get out of your way so you can try the soup. Okay. I don't want to be in the way of the feeding friends here, you know? <laughs> going to reach over and. That's a healthy portion, mm -hmm. too. Thank you. That is so pretty. It is pretty. Oh my gosh, it's not at all what I expected. No, it's not. Looks, That's great. But it's good. It's looks light. thick and mm -hmm. creamy, and you, you kind of expect it to have that heavy cream mouthfeel to it. Oh my gosh, it. it's got a real uh, great tang to it. That's it's really way satisfying. Yeah, very I good. Be... And I like the little crunchy leeks, too. Yeah, a little bit of texture goes yeah. along with things. I mean, we find you know a lot of our stuff, like garnishing the salad with the pepitas or... You know, a lot of our seafood dishes are garnished with some kind of toasted chopped nut or something that's got a little bit of crunch yeah. and texture to it. Yeah. You know, just as important, I think, as the flavors or the, the feelings. Mm-hmm. You know? mm -hmm. So good. Okay. So we've got a nice little sauce we're going to make to go along with our kebabs. Uh, super simple. It's just mm -hmm. a way to lighten up tahini sauce. You know, I love tahini, which is just a sesame paste. Um, look at the label in them in the store because they have different ratios of sesame seeds to oil. Um, but if you can find one that's more sesame seeds, less oil, I'd assume that's going to be you know, better, but look at the calorie intake on them. But it's toasted sesame seeds and oil. We lighten it up with a little bit of Greek yogurt, which also gives it a great little bit of tang. Just some mint. Um, it's not really going to take any salt or anything. I'm going to give it another little squeeze of lemon. And that's really just a great sauce. So it's equal parts tahini, uh, Greek yogurt, one little squeeze of lemon or to your liking, and just uh, about a tablespoon of chopped mint in there. Mm -hmm. okay. You like us using tahini? Yeah, um, yeah he, he's probably referring to, you know, nuts and seeds, and those are good, good sources yeah. of nutrition, good fats, fiber, 
Um, so those would be good things to use. You know, he's, you want to get more bang for your buck kind of thing, so you're going to get more nutrients probably from the seeds and the nuts in general. Um, yeah, and then he's using the Greek yogurt in there, which is also a good source down. of protein. Yep. It's lighter. Um, you want to avoid adding sugar with yeah, you doing the exactly. other kind of yogurt. But, you know, it's a good source of protein. A lot of people forget that Greek yogurt has almost as much protein as eggs does, two eggs. Mm -hmm. So it's a good alternative if you're not maybe an egg person. Nice. Or Thick if you're using it like too. this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Very good. And then sh sugar is kind of what we're really the, the culprit now. It used to be we wanted to watch out for fat. And now we're finding fat isn't necessarily the enemy. Right. It's sugar. We're right. eating way too much sugar. <laughs> mm -hmm. We're addicted to sugar. Yeah. <laughs> well, and it's in it's hidden in our foods Everything, too. Everything. Yeah. yeah. Well, if you do a low fat or non fat food item, in order to make that taste better by taking the fat out, they have to add something, and they usually add sugar. So sugar is everywhere, uh, and so and it's again one of those things that you just are drawn to. You have it, you want more of it, and so it's almost like retraining your taste buds for different flavors, um, and it's hidden in most you know a lot of processed foods. Kebabs are done, and they smell incredible. Yep. So we're gonna get a get a little restaurant here with our plating here, just for <laughs> are fun. You gonna schmear it? Yeah, we'll teach you <laughs> the art of the schmear. I've been right? watching way too many cooking. <laughs> I know, yeah. The top chef's schmear. Exactly the schmear. But hey, it looks cool, and it's easy enough to do. Well, do this at home too. Why not make it appealing? Right. Oh yeah. Make it fun. Make it look yeah. good. Make it exciting. Way more brownie points with the wife if you don't just pile <laughs> it on the plate. Trust me. Do you do all the cooking at home, Travis? No, not all. My wife's yeah. uh, she's awesome. She's Mexican uh, from Mexico, so she does a lot of really traditional Mexican oh, nice. dishes and things like that. And they're Delicious. they're great and a nice break from, you know, what I eat every day at the restaurant. But like I said, we try and kind of meal plan for the week, so we. We'll get together on something on Sunday night before I go back to work and she goes back to school and mm -hmm. just put your heads together. Yeah, and, partner yeah. up and uh, make something awesome for the week. To I need you to talk to my it. husband about that. <laughs> <laughs> We're bad with leftovers though. He's, we just seem to never get around to. He's the open a can of soup guy, so yeah. <laughs> Do you do There's, a lot of cooking at home, Kelly? Um, I would. I do most of the cooking at yeah. home. In the summertime, we do more barbecuing. My husband would do more of the yeah, barbecuing he's the kind guy of thing. For that. Yeah, we've got a kind of a, a crazy schedule though. So this is is a good meal to kind of have, and especially if it's something you can have for the week. Yeah. You know, as far as the meal prep kind of thing. Yeah. Be My prepared. girls are grown now, but um, I had one real adventurous eater and one that. Didn't would look at something and decided she didn't like it. So it was a, a bit of a challenge sometimes. So I get it, parents, right. you know, if you're dealing with the same thing. Just I, keep I know trying. How to, exactly. And, and now she's my more adventurous right. eater. Yeah. Yeah. So who knew? So your toppings and garnishes on this can, you know, can go just about any way. This is a fun little chili relish that we do. It's just got some, uh, some pickled goat horn chilies that we use at the restaurant, a little bit of pepperoncini. Um, some garlic and some oregano. A goat horn chili. Goat horn chili, yeah, they're called Mama Lil's pickled peppers. You'll see them in a lot of the higher end oh. stores and they're great. They're just really acidic, kind of mildly spicy, but they've got that cool pickled acidic flavor to them. And we've got the, something. The rainbow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like I said, getting You're chef, scoring keeping big them pretty. points over there. So this, big points. This looks like cheese and it's a fun little trick, but this is a powdered extra virgin olive oil. What? So you use that nice Shabika olive oil. And then a oh, wow. powder derivative of tapioca that binds with the oil and makes that cool little powder on there. Oh my gosh. It's kind of funny, you think you're going to get feta because it sort yeah, of fits that dish, right? That's what it looks like. Yeah, like look at what a beautiful plate that is. That's really, and then I'm going to destroy it with a fork here in a minute. <laughs> <Awesome>. <laughs> Give it a couple leaves of watercress and, like I said, major brownie points on <laughs> presentation at home, right? Really right. pretty, really pretty. Now, is the restaurant open seven days a week? Seven days a week. Yeah. Uh, lunch and dinner on the weekdays, brunch on the weekends. Uh, we do a little cocktail hour, kind of happy hour program from mm -hmm. uh, 2 to 4.30 every day. And yeah, we only close a few days a year, Christmas, Thanksgiving, 4th of July. So. Well, I'm glad they let you off tonight. Yeah, get, it's kind of nice. Get, get outdoors. Get yeah. out of the cage for yeah. an evening. You know, so. Well, they're gorgeous. Again, recipes will be posted at ksps.org. We've got a couple minutes, so I say we eat a little bit here and uh, you know, wrap things up pretty soon. But yeah, this is great, great food. It looks great. Okay. Look, I even brought you a fork. <laughs> <laughs> what do you most enjoy cooking? I like things that take a lot of time and attention. So, yeah. you know, braised things, stews, uh, you know, braised, know braised meats big, on the bone is yeah. kind of my favorite thing yeah. to do. So 
Um, yeah, a lot of the stuff you know I do at home, we make a lot of, again, with the Mexican wife, we do carnitas, traditional mm -hmm. style, that just take four hours in the oven, or things on the smoker that take forever. I like that reward at the end of waiting a long forever process. for something. Yeah, yeah. And they're also all good things that you can do in large batches and keep around pretty well, so. Mm -hmm. Okay. These would be um, kid friendly too, because they probably like it on a stick, you know. Kids like, like anything on a stick, on a stick. Right? Yeah. They just do. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, that the... is delicious. Yeah. Really good. Mm -hmm. I love <laughs> the, um, what did you call this? The, the... It's just a extra virgin olive oil powder. I'm going to play with it. We, it know, just we... dissolves in your mouth, oh, no, too. I it's didn't, cool. I, th I didn't know about that. It's kind wow. of fun. It turns back into olive oil in the... Now, is this, the, uh, is this a, a portion that you would approve of, or is this a little on the large side? No, I actually would I be okay. Because I plan to eat the whole thing. <laughs> 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 no, it would be okay. I mean, if you're thinking about actual portion sizes, mm -hmm. I mean, there might be a little more protein, but as far as like sitting down for a meal, the amount of rice that's on here would be about a right, the right serving. So it's not anything that's too large. Mm -hmm. No. Mm -mm. And then if you have a little bit of the salad that goes with it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we haven't or even another tried vegetable the salad or something. Yet. Yeah. We haven't even tried the salad yet. This is so good. Hmm. All right. It's good. And I can taste the lemon in I'm so sorry you don't get some of it. Because <laughs> it's delicious. <laughs> Come and see us. We'll make you some. Yeah, absolutely. You're going to have to run it as a lunch special yeah. for the next week. And I have eaten next oh. over a few times. You will not be disappointed. So, delicious you. food. Incredible service. Cool location, too. Yeah, it's fun. It's in a Craftsman-style house up in the Gonzaga neighborhood. Um, it's pretty fun. We have people walking through there that lived in the house at one point, or lived oh, really? there when it was a frat house for Gonzaga. Or, <laughs> you know, it's, it's there's no neat. remnants of the frat house left. Yeah, it's kind of yeah. cool. Our owners went through the uh, Gonzaga library and got all these historical photos of the mm. house through the years. So from when it was a private residence to mm. Gonzaga housing to all these things, and they're all hanging up the stairs, so you can kind of follow a timeline of the building, which is pretty neat. We've got yeah, always got something fun coming up. We've got an Iron Goat beer dinner coming up next month. That's going to be a fun event. We do a rotating series of winemaker, beer maker, cocktail dinners, one a month through the year. So. Mm -hmm. Are those listed online? Can They're we find you online? They're all listed online, yeah, cloverspokane.com if you go to the events tab. Um, right now we're selling kind of a cool thing that's a season's pass to all those events. Oh, so you buy one set price idea. and get your ticket to uh, 10 events through the year. It also gives you 10% off your dining, 10% off catering. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a, we're calling it the Clover Club. It's kind of a little preferred what guest program idea. right now. Yeah, yeah. that's a great First idea. First year trying it, so it's, it's neat. Well, the food is delicious. It I is delicious. That. Both of you have been great, great information tonight, nutritionally, and delicious recipes posted at uh, ksps.org. And I want to thank both of you for being here. Just really good stuff. Excellent. Thank fun you. show. Oh, Very yeah, fun. Thanks for having us. That's going to do it for this edition of Health Matters. Our thanks to executive chef Travis Dickinson. A reminder that you can find him at Clover Restaurant here in Spokane. Our thanks as well to registered dietitian Kelly Groth uh, for her sharing her expertise tonight. And you'll find the recipes tonight from uh, tonight's show at our website, ksps.org. And uh, just click on Health Matters when you go to the page. We hope you'll join us on February 16th when our topic will be heart health. We have an important story to share with you. Hear from a woman with no family history who had a heart attack when she was just 47 years old. She got medical help in time and she'll share her story of recovery. Again, that is coming up in February right here on KSPS. Until then, thank you for watching. Happy eating. I'm Teresa Lukens. Good night. Health Matters is made possible by our viewers, the friends of KSBS, and by Providence Healthcare. I'm Dr. Andrew Boulay, and when my wife had a cardiac arrest, I chose Providence because I knew that everything we needed for her complex care was available, from the emergency room to radiology to the nursing staff to the specialists we needed for her care. I'm Arnie Peterson and I'm an orthopedic surgeon and I work at Sacred Heart for Providence Medical Group. When I needed my hip replaced, I chose Providence because of the professionalism and the care that I knew I'd receive. I never thought twice about going anywhere else.